Hi, I'm Ime, and I'm the head of the new product experimentation group here at Meta, which is focused on continuously planting the new seeds of ideas and big, bold bets for the company, while also trying to increase the level of zero to one thinking and building at Meta. Now, nearly two decades ago, I started my career as an engineer. I was working on enterprise storage software, but I made my way to Meta about 12 years ago because of the mission. And for nearly a decade here before this job, I worked with developers and entrepreneurs around the world who were interested in using our platform tools and our technology to try to build awesome new zero to one social products and businesses. You might imagine given that work and then clearly now the work that I'm doing in leading NPE, it's pretty clear that I love working with small teams that have big visions and big kind of ambitious ideas. You know, ultimately trying to take those ideas and those early thoughts from zero to one, and then if they're lucky, you know, from one to scale. Now, I have a bunch of fond memories of working with some of the early unknown startups that are now household names from Spotify to Tinder to Uber. And perhaps a, a not so hot take is that all of them, and you know, more, more generally, every product that has ever scaled to millions or billions of people around the world really started as a small idea, small seed of an idea, an experiment. Think about it. Back in 2003, you had Mark, you had Dustin, you had a few other friends that had this thesis that their Harvard classmates really wanted to online Facebook to connect with each other, to coordinate classes, and ultimately to make new friends. Back in 2009, Kevin Systrom you know, built a prototype called Bourbon that was inspired by his love for a nice smooth drink in San Francisco. And a few months later, him and then a former classmate too named Mikey pivoted that experiment to a photo sharing app with some pretty cool filters. About the same time in 2009, Jan Kuhn wanted to experiment with the fact that mobile technology was here and was, was, was gonna be around, that push notifications had just become a thing, and that perhaps they could serve as replacement for SMSs, which at the time still cost a lot of money in his native country of the Ukraine and many other countries around the world at the time. Now, each of these products, like I just mentioned, you know, started as a small seed of an idea, as an experiment, that was being run by a small group of really passionate, but also really driven people. And each of those seeds has now grown into its own massive redwood tree, all right? Collectively, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have WhatsApp that are being used by nearly half of humanity every single month. Now, these are products at a scale that have never been seen before. But like all consumer products, regardless of how massive they are scale-wise, this portfolio that exists now at Meta and makes up Meta must continually innovate in order to remain relevant, right? Academics like Clay Christensen have written about this extensively and the challenges of innovating once you're at scale. And Meta is not without these challenges, but we believe deeply that experimentation begets innovation. So instead of letting these challenges and these complexities that are well known paralyze us, we tackle them head on, both through kind of a, a, a cultural lens and a structural commitment to experimentation. Now, culturally, since the very beginning of the company, we've had this ethos called the hacker way. Now, despite the stereotypes that are out there, the vast majority of hackers are not people who are looking to try to exploit vulnerabilities or gain unauthorized access to systems. They're creatives. They're creative problem solvers that are looking to use their technical know-how to overcome challenges and problems or complexities that they have in their day-to-day -day lives or that they are proximate to because they can see it within their communities. You know, the hacker way is about believing that something can always be better and that nothing is ever complete. It means that testing the boundaries of what can be done is part of your DNA, right? And that ultimately defying those who are satisfied with the status quo or who say that what we're trying to do impossible is how you move through life. It means that instead of endlessly debating about whether, you know, the best way to, to build an idea is A, B, or C, you just prototype it, you build it, you experiment, you put it out there and you see how it works. Right? The hacker way is, uh, it, it, it captures this notion and belief that kind of building responsibly over the long term really requires releasing and learning from smaller, continuous, higher velocity, more iterative builds, rather than trying to get all of the technical details and product details right all up front and at once. Now, this requires a certain level of patience to hold for kind of a big, bold, ambitious vision, but also coupling that with the impatience for building it, right, and getting going. Now, that's cultural. Structurally, given our size at Meta and our scale, we have now reached a place where we can take a multi-pronged approach towards experimentation. You know, as they say, you, you can't flippantly move 
you know, a house or the furniture in a house that a billion people frequent every single day. So experimentation inside of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and any of those products at scale have to be done thoughtfully, have to be done carefully, and have to be done responsibly. Now, in order for us to get this balance right with responsibly you know, kind of experimenting, but also the urgency that experimentation requires, we've engineered and we've built some of the most impressive internal product tools for experimentation at Meta. Now, these are tools that allow you to quickly create sandboxes inside of these billion person apps so that you can focus and that you can test your ideas and your experiment on a subset of a billion plus users. Makes sense, right? These are tools that allow you to run sophisticated A-B tests, right? That help the entrepreneurial thinking go from kind of concept and idea really quickly to implementation of the experiment. And then last but not least, tools to measure the results, tools to help you make quick decisions, right? Enable fast decision-making on whether we should launch the experiment you just tested to billions of people or simply capture the learnings, shut it down and move on quickly to the next experiment. Now this level or this method of experimentation itself inside of these big billion person apps would be impressive for a company like Meta, are impressive for a company like Meta. But in today's environment, <clears throat> where the modern day tools of building and experimenting are allowing anybody in any corner of the world right now to go from idea to prototype to product to global product and faster than ever before, we can't simply rely on kind of the experimentation that happens inside of our billion person products. We need to be able to freely experiment with kind of far afield, bolder ideas in a depressurized space here at Meta, where we can rapidly launch new ideas, bold standalone product experiments, and do the same thing, see if they work or quickly shut them down if they don't. Now, these are ideas that, uh, that challenge our, our, our traditional and our, our, our current product conventions in ways that you simply can't do if you were building inside of the billion person apps. And as anyone who has built kind of uh, this form of zero to one experimentation, you know how hard it is, right? 99% of the products that you put out there, that you take the risk to put into people's hands are not gonna find product market fit. But it's a strategy well worth pursuing at the scale and the size that we're at. No, in, in, in the worst case scenario, you, you launch something, you put it out there, but you've learned in a way that is way more efficient than you would have in other parts of a kind of a large at scale product or, or organization. And you're able to capture those learnings and you can infuse them then into the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the WhatsApp uh, in, a, in, a, in a pretty lightweight way. But in the best case scenario, you discover that you've, you've found something, a new paradigm, a new way to add meaning to, to people's lives. And before you know it, you can scale and grow that thing to be the next billion person product or experience that exists out there. Now, lastly, as part of our multi-pronged kind of approach to experimentation, you got to create room to experiment with ideas that are going to usher in the next era of innovation. For example, that really, really, really big vision and future for the metaverse. Now, there are only a handful of companies that could take this type of bet and invest billions of dollars every single year into a vision whose full potential probably won't be fully realized for you know, more than a decade to come. But as you look across our Reality Labs organization right now, and you take a look at what they're building and what they're experimenting on, you see experiments that cut across augmented reality, virtual reality, of course, artificial intelligence, and so, so much more, all with an eye towards building this next era of innovation and an eye towards building towards the metaverse. Now, whether it's building and experimenting inside of a billion person app that exists today or in a brand new standalone zero to one product experience looking for product market fit or trying to build out kind of the future platforms to usher in the next era of innovation. Our belief is that experimentation begets innovation, right? Real technological breakthroughs come through this commitment to experiments, especially when you're at the scale and the size that we are at. It requires both the cultural DNA, but then also the structural muscle to, or, in order to experiment in an efficient way. Now, this requires a certain type of leadership. You know, as leaders, we must be, uh, you know, uh, foster and we must be gardeners of new ideas, but not the holder of all ideas. It means that we must be shaping the spaces for others to experiment freely, right, and boldly, not taking up space ourselves. It means that we have to get really, really comfortable with making mistakes, right? Something that might be might not be natural to, to, to many of us, but comfortable with making mistakes, knowing that you're gonna build a lot of things that just won't work, right? 
Any great product breakthrough that's happened requires a commitment to take many shots on goal and the patience to know that most of them aren't going to be a hit. Now, this truth is captured pretty nicely in this story about the famous composer Bach, right? And it was written in the New Yorker article uh, called The Creation Myth. But the quote reads, the difference between Bach and his forgotten peers isn't necessarily that he had a better ratio of hits to misses. The difference is that the mediocre might have had a dozen ideas while Bach in his lifetime created more than a thousand full-fledged musical compositions. A genius is a genius because they can put together such a staggering number of insights, ideas, theories, random observations, and unexpected connections that they almost always inevitably end up with something that is great. Quality is a probabilistic function of quantity. Now there is nothing neat and efficient about creativity. The more successes that there are, the more failures that there were as well. Meaning that the person who has far more breakthrough ideas than the rest of us most likely had far more bad ideas than the rest of us too. Now, this is why managing the creative process can feel so difficult, especially when you're at a scale and a size and you've seen prior success. But like most things, most things in life, it's that difficult journey that matters the most. That's why we're all here as technologists here today, right? To work on solving complex problems for products at scale. To talk about navigating the trade-offs and the challenging engineering problems that we will undoubtedly face and that will arise. And as anyone who has experienced it, you all know it's well worth it, right? This hard journey is always worth it. Once you've seen your idea, go to experiment, go from zero to one, find product market fit. And especially if you can get through that breakthrough scale that has the potential for your product, for your idea, for your experience to serve millions, if not even billions of people around the world. It's breathtaking. I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. It's great to spend a couple of few minutes with you.